All right, let's go ahead and get going here. Um, thank you guys all for taking the time out of your day to go through this meeting and also to volunteer your time coaching this season. Uh, we really could not make this season work without you guys, so I really do appreciate you. Uh, just a reminder, uh, if you could put your um, yourself on mute, and then if you have any questions or anything, feel free to either interrupt me or we can answer a bunch of questions at the very end. Um, my name is Lauren. I am a recreation coordinator with Park City Recreation, and I have been running the Spring Youth Soccer Program for, gosh, five or six years. I took last year off. I had my son in March, so I'm, I'm back at it. And of course, this is the snowiest winter we've ever seen. So um, yeah, we're going to try and do our best and, and make things work and get the kids out and having some fun, um, hopefully. So kind of just jumping right in here, I'm gonna share my screen. You guys all see that? Thumbs not, up. not yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. No, we can. Yes. Perfect. I already remembered to hit the record button, so things are good. So starting out here, so, um, if you have not filled out the volunteer application yet, please take a second to do that. You do not have to fill in like your resume or your employment history, anything like that, kind of just the bare bones. Um, and then our HR department can send you guys the background consent email, which will be a separate email from them. And that will get the ball rolling on the background check. Um, credits for coaching. You guys will receive 50% off of your registration fee. Once I kind of get all of my coaches um, situated on my teams, then I will go through and issue those um, credits back onto the card you paid with. You also receive a punch pass to the mark, uh, which you can use for your family to come in in the summertime or you know, however you wanna use the, the facility, just they are not good for tennis. So anything else in the facility except tennis. Um, so those are just some things that you'll receive as a coach for us. Um, again, I'll kind of go back and let you guys know when I'm gonna issue those, those credits so you can just make sure you, you receive that. Um, all right, so <laughs> updates for the season. Obviously we have a ton of snow and our grass fields are probably not going to open till the end of May if we're lucky. So with the recent snow we've just had, we've had to push back the date to April 22nd. So Saturday the 22nd will be the very first day that teams will meet and get together. And that will be in two different locations. So our pre-K and kindergarten divisions will play on the turf field at Dozier, which is right next to the Park City High School. And then third and fourth and first and second grade will play at Quinn's on the turf field that's there. I'm hoping that we'll be able to jump on the grass for those last two Saturdays, the third and the 10th of the season. I know we'll have a conflict at Dozier for graduation on the third. So I'm really hoping that we'll be able to get out on the grass to finish out the season. Um, another big thing since we will be on the turf is there won't be official lines painted on the field. Um, we'll kind of use cones and, you know, best judgment there as far as like goal kick lines and, you know, corner kick area. Um, so we'll do our best in that way too, as you know, with using cones and such. So kind of a bummer, but, you know, I think the main thing that we're happy to be able to do is just get the kids out seeing their friends, hopefully in some sunshine, getting some exercise and, you know, learning the, the game of soccer. Uh, kind of touch through those. So your expectations for the season really is, you know, obviously to teach players some skills of soccer, teamwork, sportsmanship in an environment where participation and fun are the focus and not winning at all costs. You know, we don't keep track of the goals I know the kids do, you know, as they're running around on the field, they, they know what the score is, but, you know, we don't keep track of the, of the score and, you know, record them down through the season. So really it's kind of that emphasis on having fun with your friends and, you know, learning a new skill. So really kind of 
making sure that when you do chat with your parents, like that they understand, hey, you know, I am a volunteer coach and I'm, I'm focused on making sure that these kids have fun, number one priority, and that they want to come to soccer every Saturday, um, as opposed to, you know, being a drill sergeant out there running, you know, wind sprints and whatnot. So um, really want to make sure that that is clear. Um, so I think what would be good for you guys to that first time you kind of get all your players together on the 22nd would be maybe to chat with the parents and say, Hey, does anybody want to lead up, you know, the team snacks or, you know, kind of help organize that that way things aren't all on your shoulders. You're already kind of communicating with the parents, sending emails, whether, you know, it's the games are canceled or what time the practice, their games are. So, you know, try and put some, um, delegate some other tasks to some of those other parents who are willing to help maybe in a different way. Um, referees, I'm, I'm going through the process of hiring some refs and usually these refs, it's like their first job, you know, they're 14, 15 years old. So kind of keeping in mind that, um, you know, they do mostly understand the game of soccer and have played for, for quite a few years themselves, um, you know, but kind of just taking it easy on them. If you have some feedback on, you know, maybe a specific ref and what they're doing or not doing, you know, feel free to always reach out to me and I'm happy to have those conversations with them um, privately. Uh, let's see, setting an example regarding sportsmanship, fairness and equal play, right? Um, and then obviously having fun is super important. So this app, Mojo, is pretty slick. Um, if you are not super familiar with soccer or, you know, have drills to kind of pull out of your hat um, on a whim, they really do break down, you know, you can kind of schedule your practice totally through them based on how many kids you have on your team, what age group, um, what skill you want to work at, whether it's, you know, dribbling or passing, shooting, they really can kind of tailor um, your needs there. So if you need a good resource, please check out the Mojo app. It's free to download. Um, and I also sent out in those emails today, kind of just um, a packet of, you know, fun games and warm up things and um, stuff you can do with the kids to kind of get them running around maybe as a, you know, get their heart rate up. Um, but the Mojo app has been great for us. So please check that out. All right, so everyone should have received today their team roster uh, schedules besides the third and fourth grade. I haven't gotten those done yet. Um, and, you know, just some other pieces of information like the rules and whatnot. So every kid should have on your team roster their email and phone number. If you are missing that, please reach out and let me know and I will kind of track that down for you guys. Um, I do ask that you are that first point of contact for your players, parents. So if you put together an email and kind of say, you know, introduce yourself, um, you know, let them know what color team they are this season, attach the schedule, stuff like that. Um, that way they kind of have all that information. Uh, typically I ask that you try and do that at least, you know, three or four days before the season actually starts. So that gives you some time. I know spring break is next week. So people may be going out of town. Um, you know, but the sooner the better, honestly, to reach out that way parents know what to expect. Um, they can check out the schedule and kind of have an idea. And it stops them from having to reach out to me and say, hey, I haven't heard from my coach yet. Um, and then, you know, what I will do in that case is I'll just give them your direct um, email and phone and have them reach out to you just in case. So um, earlier, the better. But, you know, I understand everybody's very busy and, uh, you know, spring break is coming up. So Whenever you can get to that, that'd be great. Um, so like I said, Saturdays we'll be playing. Uh, Wednesdays we will use as makeup days for any weather cancellations. So I know first and second, third and fourth, typically in the past have played Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, so we'll just focus on Saturdays for this season. And then, like I said, if any weather cancellations, we'll use Wednesdays as those that backup day so that we're not missing out on even more days um, during the season. So a little bit of an adjustment there. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. There's a few of you who are coaching more than one team. I did try and go through all of the schedules and make sure that there are no conflicts so that you can be 
at both games. It might be a little bit tough this year since we are at those two locations, um, you know, but I did try and build that in for you guys. So if there are any conflicts, you know, again, delegate, reach out to your parents, ask them, hey, you know, I may be a, a few minutes late. I'm coming from Dozier. Do you think you can kind of get, you know, the practice started or the game started and I'll be there when I can, um, you know, use, use your, your resources there. Uh, we'll go through the rules briefly in a minute here. And then the parent packet, um, I'm going to send out to all the parents. And that will have kind of the basic info on location of games, you know, what to expect as a parent, um, kind of the, the basics there. So know that they will be getting some sort of information as far as how the league is going to run this season. Um, so at the field, typically I do set up like a rec table kind of as like a welcome for any questions or, you know, field location kind of stuff. We have first aid there. Um, if you do show have a parent and they're not sure where they belong, send them to the rec table. Myself or another staff member will be um, up there and can help them with whatever you need. Fields and parking. Um, you know, we're going to have extra trash cans out there. If you can have the kids pick up after themselves, throw the stuff out. Parking at Dozier, we're still kind of trying to work out the kinks there. Um, there's a lot of snow on that field and in the surrounding area. So not all the access points are quite available yet. So hoping to get some um, staff over to maybe plow some of those areas to make it a little bit easier. But I will send an additional email out to coaches and parents that kind of details, you know, whether we can park at the LDS church lot or if parking, you know, in the high school lot uh, will be good. That first day is also the last day at PCMR. So, you know, we may be quite busy over there with people parking and taking the bus up. Um, so just things to kind of keep in mind as you're, as you're heading over to the field and trying to find a place to park. Quinn's hopefully will be a little bit easier you know there's quite a bit of trail use over there but those two lots that are right next to the turf field uh, will be kind of the go-to for access onto the turf um, i'll send a map out that will kind of show where we're going to enter because there's snow kind of covering all areas of the outside of the field and there's just one point to access the field so um, just keep a lookout for that in the in the coming days um, weather hotline will be the best tool for you guys to see if games are canceled or not. And please push that number to your parents, unless you want to have in a text chain or something that you want to control and send to your parents and have a direct line. Um, I think it'd be easier to just say, Hey, here's a weather hotline. If it looks, you know, questionable outside, just give a call. I will have that updated by 8 AM on Saturdays. And if we are playing on a Wednesday for a reschedule by 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Uh, so there's that number there. I've got it attached to all kinds of pieces of material for, for parents to, to find. So hopefully uh, passing that info, maybe in that welcome email that you send to your parents so they have that. Um, if you guys want to schedule practices outside of what we have scheduled, feel free. I think finding the space is going to be the most difficult because, you know, not only are we trying to use what space is available, we, but we also have our stakeholders like the Park City Soccer Club, lacrosse, high school teams that are looking for a place to practice as well. So if you are thinking, hey, I want to schedule something outside, um, reach out, let me know, and I could, you know, do my best to do some research and find what is available. Um, can always think about the, the gym at the mark too. So just a, another option there. Um, any questions so far as I'm going through? Okay. Um, all right, so just a little bit of kind of some stuff that you can do with, especially those older divisions, I'd say the first and second and third and fourth. When you guys do get together on your first day, um, you know, obviously we want to do names and kind of getting to know you stuff. And I think um, a cool thing that I heard in the past is coming up with a list of things that make a good teammate, um, you know, have players give their ideas, you can write it down, have them sign it if you want to be that, um, you know, thorough with it. 
And then, you know, it's something that you can go back on throughout the season if you're having a behavior issue and kind of say, hey, you know, that wasn't something that we wrote down that would make a good teammate, right? Or, you know, let's remember what a good teammate is. And they have some accountability in that because they helped, you know, come up with those things as well. So it's not you just saying, hey, a good teammate is this, this, and this. You know, they have some ownership in that too. <clears throat> um, all right. So we talked about that. Um, all right, so the rules, I'm gonna quickly jump in and kind of highlight just some key parts. We'll start with the pre-K and kinder. So there are no referees for those younger divisions, pre-K and kinder. The coaches are kind of on the field helping facilitate the game, herding cats. Um, as you guys know, with those younger kids, kind of funny, um, but they play 3v3 with no goalies. They have the small little pug goals. We play really small fields with them. Um, let's see. This goes for all divisions. All players have to wear shin guards. I will have some extras at the um, rec table at the field. If anybody, you know, forgets them or maybe they can't afford to buy a pair, you know, I'm happy to donate and give to whoever needs them. Um, let's see. If numbers dictate teams, you can play with fewer kids per side. So, you know, maybe you only have four kids show up one week so you can play two V two or, you know, take a kid from another team. If they have a lot of kids that show up for their game and we have pennies and they can just play on a different team to kind of even it out. Right. We don't want to have to do any kind of forfeit. So just, you know, make it work as best that we can um, with who you have. Uh, the younger divisions will have um, a 15 minute practice prior to the game start. So those pre-K and kinders, you guys will have 15 minutes to kind of practice, do some drills or warm up games, tag games, whatever, get the kids running. And then you'll have two 15 minute halves with a five minute halftime. Um, little things like we wanna switch sides after the half, you know, that's something that will always happen as they continue in their soccer career, right? So kind of instilling those things even at you know those younger pre-K kinder where we'll flip and go the opposite direction after the halftime. Um, let's see, a kick-in. So first, second, and um, sorry, pre-K kinder and first and second will all do kick-ins when the ball goes out of bounds on the sideline. So throw-ins will only be for the third and fourth division, okay? You can do substitutions at any time, obviously, um, slide tackling is not permitted. Okay. We want the kids to stay on their feet. Uh, we'll have our referees definitely call that kind of stuff. And, you know, if they're falling on the ground and trying to kick and play that way, we'll definitely make those calls as well. Right. I always tell my referees that it's more of a teaching job than it is really, you know, being out there, um, blowing the whistle hard and, you know, calling every single thing. These kids are so young that it's important to, you know, remind them, okay, so this is a goal kick. This is where the ball goes for, a goal kick or, you know, remember we got to stay on our feet and, and encourage the kid to get up and give them a chance to, you know, understand that rule rather than, you know, immediately kind of making those harsh calls right away. So obviously safety issues, you know, things like that, pushing, using their hands and, you know, physical ways, um, we'll make those calls right away and, and try to address those things. Um, if you notice kind of on, on along those lines that a referee maybe isn't taking the initiative to kind of make those calls and there's some safety things going on, please um, let me know, right? So I can address that with them. Um, everything is an indirect free kick, meaning that if there's a penalty called, the ball has to be touched by another player before they can try and score a goal. So if there's a foul, they cannot take that and try and just shoot it immediately into the goal, um, it won't count. So they'll have to pass it to another player who can then try and shoot. There's no penalty kicks in those younger divisions um, and no headers in any division. There's been a lot of research that has come out, uh, if you guys are aware, but um, we really are not encouraging kids to use their head, you know, especially if a goalie is, you know, throwing the ball out or, um, what have you, we ask that, you know, we don't encourage those headers. Um, let's see. It's kind of it for those pre-K and kinders. First and second grade, 
Again, small sided fields, 4v4 is on, are on the field and there's also still no goalies for those guys. Um, and a big thing with them is, you know, there'll always be that one kid that kind of wants to hang back and kind of protect the goal. You know, we encourage them to come up to at least half field so that um, they're still engaged in the play, but, you know, can able to run back and, and try and stop those, those goals to be scored um, rather than kind of hang back and try and play goalie. Uh, those guys will have a 10 minute practice prior to the game and then two 20 minute halves for those first and second grade divisions. Uh, half times will be five minutes and, and same deal, right? If you have not that many players show up, feel free to adjust um, and pull players from the other team if, if you can do that. So we will have referees as long as I can get them hired um, for those first and second grade divisions. So they will be on the field. Um, we typically ask that there's just one coach on the field, maybe for the first half of the season. And then, you know, as things start to progress, we kind of maybe stay on the sideline a little bit more and let the kids kind of take, you know, a little bit more ownership of the game. I obviously still coach from the sidelines, say what you want to say, but um, being out and kind of moving their bodies and positioning them on the field, you know, we want them to kind of feel like they're progressing through the season. So trying to not be as much of a presence on the field as the season goes on. Um, again, they'll have kick-ins if the ball goes out of bounds. Um, so in the rules, if you guys have looked through, this will be in the third and fourth grade division as well. But a couple of years ago, we implemented these build out lines and essentially for those younger, that first and second grade, it was just a line that came across the field kind of um, in between the goalie box and half field. And it was mainly for those teams that were on defense, right? So it's a goal kick and that defensive team is now creeping up really far and not allowing that team that has the ball to make a pass and get the ball out to their players. So with this year, not having lines on the field will probably just use you know a cone on either side um, and, and the rest will just have to kind of do their best judgment to make sure you know that the kids are giving ample space so that those players are able to get the ball out to another player on a goal kick and without them rushing getting it and then being able to quickly score a goal um, so we'll just make an adjustment there with the cones <clears throat> um okay Third and fourth, uh, they'll be seven v seven, and that includes the goalie. So six field players plus the goalie on the field. Um, they will have two 25 minute halves. We don't really give them much of a practice time. Um, you know, if teams are taking a long time to show up, you waiting on players to show up, we will adjust the halftime to be maybe a little bit shorter by a couple minutes so that we are finishing by the time that we need for that next group to come in. So, you know, maybe your game is 23 minute halves as, as opposed to 25, just so that we can kind of try and stay on schedule. Uh, we'll provide a goal uh, jersey for the goalie or a penny or something um, that they can wear to just kind of delineate themselves from, from the rest of the field players. Uh, so again, they will do throw-ins and that's something that the referees are going to be encouraged to kind of coach. Um, so, you know, if they're coming over and they're going like this, they'll give them another chance to kind of do it properly. Um, keep that back foot down, all that stuff, you know, good reminders for the kids and then give them another opportunity to, to do it correct. If not, then the ball will be a turnover and it will go to the other team. So really trying to encourage them to, you know, learn the proper way to throw in um, definitely good stuff to work on during practices and, um, yeah, giving them another chance. So they will have the build out line also in the third and fourth division and that it will kind of work the same way with, you know, the goal kicks to keep those players behind that line so that they are able to get a pass out to one of their players before being rushed by a defender. And the build out line also will be interesting this year. Um, it, we use it for offsides. So kind of in that middle part of the field, you know, there can't be any offsides called. And then on those 
outside parts of the field as we get closer to the goals, um, you know, offsides can be called. So maybe a little bit, you know, not as perfect as we'd like it to be with the cones on the outside, a um, little bit harder for those referees to see, but, you know, we'll, we'll do our best um, to try and make those calls and, you know, remind the kids where they can and can't be to, so that they don't get called offsides. Uh, a big one here for the goalies is please do not punt or drop kick the ball. They can pass it. They can roll it. Um, they can kind of throw it with, you know, over their head, like a throw in, however they want to do it. But um, trying to keep away from those you know, punts and um, drop kicks. Hey, okay. like that's kind of. All the big stuff, anything on the on the rules from anybody. Okay. Equipment. Oh, go ahead. Um, for the pre-K, how many? How long are the halves again? Uh, fifteen minutes. Two fifteen. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So equipment. I am working on getting that stuff put together. If you guys could give me until the thirteenth, so next Thursday. I will have everything ready to be picked up at the mark uh, for you. So that will include all the balls, cones, and um, uniforms for your entire team. So April 13th through the 21st, if you could swing by the mark at some point and pick up your equipment, that would be great. If you know that you're not going to be able to do that, um, just shoot me an email and I can plan to bring it over to the field. Um, you know, just keep in mind that I will be bouncing from two locations with that. So please, if you can um, try and grab those or maybe ask a parent on your team, if they're able to stop at the mark, you know, maybe they're there anyway for tennis or something like that. So um, balls and cones will be collected at the end of the season. Kids get to keep their uniforms. So after your game on that last day, you can just drop the equipment with me and I'll take it off your hands. Um, we do not do participation medals anymore. Um, typically we'll give a little bit, you know, a little gift or something fun for the kids at the end of the season. Um, I have not yet put those in order. So if there's something that you've seen in the past, please feel free to, to share. Um, I'm open to ideas and would love to get some, you know, something fun and fresh for the kids. So uh, any questions on anything that we kind of went through today? I know it's a lot of info. I think kind of the main things to note are Saturdays, mainly throughout the season. Wednesdays will be weather backups. Uh, Pre-K and kinder will be at Dozier Turf. And first and second, third and fourth will be at Quinn's Turf. And then on the schedules, I've got TBD on the 3rd and 10th of June. Hopefully we'll be on the grass over by the ice arena at that point, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, anything, any questions, concerns? I, um, I have a couple questions. Um, this is Abby Schaff. Um, I, so for the uniforms, is it top only or top and shorts and socks? I've gotten kind of confused with all the different um, leagues. I can never remember what is included. Yeah, we do the full kit, um, okay. jersey, shorts and socks. Cool. All right. That's great. Um, the other question I had is for, um, so my daughter is on a, a, a light blue, the first and second grade team. And I can't tell if myself or Katie is technically the head coach just for like communication purposes. So maybe I can reach out to you later about that. Yeah, um, I think um, there's a few of you guys who put down to be assistant coaches and I just paired okay. you together. So, okay. so we can just coordinate. You guys wanna, okay. yeah. I just, I, I couldn't tell and she couldn't tell. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just ask. So yeah. that's great. Well, I'll just work with her um, on just like the communication and stuff. Perfect. And you are going to send some communication out to the parents when, to, like, like this week, do you think? I'm just kind of yeah. thinking. Like, yeah, I, um, I'll probably send the parent packet out to them probably tomorrow or Friday. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to get a little bit more detail on um, kind of the parking situation at Dozier okay. so that I can okay. get it all together on one you know, document. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, I'm hoping to get that stuff out by the end of the week. Okay. Um, and obviously we'll see that. So, yeah. Yep. Um, I'll include you guys all. Up. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. I think those were my questions. Sounds great. Thanks for all the info. Yeah. Anything Lauren, else? Yeah. Lauren, uh, should kids have turf cleats since we're not playing on grass? Up to you. I mean, I don't, you know, we don't require even cleats on the grass. Like sneakers are just fine. It may be a little bit slippery with just sneakers. Um, especially if there's any kind of, you know, moisture on the field. So I turf shoes would be ideal, but you know, obviously not a requirement. Cleats are fine too on the turf, you know. Hey Lauren. So the, the, the season starts the 22nd and it's over mid June. When is the last game? Uh, June 10th. June 10th. Okay. We did then, extend it out a week just because we kind of pushed it back a week. And I know that school is out. Um, you know, people may be out going on vacation, but, you know, trying to give that opportunity to the kids who are still here and want to finish out the season. So we'll just kind of play that by ear. If you hear a lot of kids will be gone for that last week, you know, let me know so that I can kind of chat with the other coach and maybe make an alternative plan if needed. Have you got the schedules yet? Or are you going to send those out later? Yeah, so I've got all the schedules done um, except for the third and fourth grade because I'm going to add an eighth team off of the wait list. And so I just want to have all those kids in and then I'll get that schedule um, probably by midweek next week to you guys. Okay, nothing else. If, if you think of something, you know, obviously reach out, email, call, um, whatever's best. And um, I'll keep you guys in the loop. Any additional changes um, that may come if we get more snow, hopefully not. Um, yeah, but you know, let me know if anything comes up and uh, I'm here to support you guys. So thank you again for taking the time and helping out this season coach. I really do, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks Lauren. Thanks, yeah, thanks Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Hey, Lauren, I'm going to stay a little bit because I have a question. Yeah. Um, so I see that on the roster, it has me and Forrest Carey. So uh -huh. he is, is he like my son? He signed up to be an assistant coach. And so, yeah, I mean, you guys can tag team it out there. If you are gone or whatever, um, you know, you just have another set of hands out there to help you. Okay. I was going to talk to you on that on, on the 22nd of uh, that Saturday is my son's birthday. Um, so we were actually talking, maybe going out of town, but I wanted to check in with you, you know, first, because, you know, it's not, no, there's no plans. It was just a talk, a talk. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to see how you felt about that since it's the first day. <laughs> uh, Ivan, it is your son's birthday. Do what you guys want to do. I would um, chat with Forrest and see if he's available. If not, you know, reach out to some of the parents and just say, hey, you know, we've got this going on. Would one of you be able to maybe hand out the uniforms and, you know, kind of get practice going for the first week? You know, I wouldn't cancel your your birthday plans um, on account of soccer. Yeah, no, we definitely still celebrate, but we just, you know, if we, we would go out uh, out of town or yeah. just stay. So I can just get in touch with Forrest and work things out then between me. Yeah, and yeah. OK, cool. Sounds good. Um, other than that, um, when we're. With the uniforms, do we 